You're watching Fanboy Versus with your hosts, J.D. Church, Nicole Hale, Chris Triplett, and Chris McFeely. And you are listening to Fanboy Versus. I am your host, J.D., joined finally by my complete crew. We've got Nicole, we've got Triplet, we've got McFeely, we've got shit comics this week. It's going to be <laughs> absolutely fantastic. It is Fanboy versus the death of parentheses Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, so we're going to be talking about that near the end of the show. Um, otherwise, we really have crap all for comics. Uh, I'm just going to lay that out there. But for some reason, this is kind of like last week I had nothing. This week I had nothing. I don't know what's going on. Well, What's it's one of those that? months that has five Wednesdays in it, so everything's a little bit more spaced out, but this week does seem to have been hit the hardest. I, mm. I literally, I walked into my shop, and like for two weeks in a row, I have had nothing in my pull box. Well, you probably so, have a big week next week. Then. I know, I'm going to hate myself. i get it next week. So this <laughs> week, yeah, and so every time that happens, my shopkeep keeps sticking me with trades. So this <laughs> week... This week, yeah, uh, I see that shrug, McFeely, that knowing shrug, because that's what you do. So this week, my uh, my shop owner stuck me with the uh, DC collection of the Alan Moore, um, like, best of collection. So it's got... Uh, oh, the, uh, the uh, Tales of the DC Universe? Yes, remember? yeah. That's so it's like, an awesome book. That's, that's what I hear. I've not had time to sit down and read it. I've kind of skimmed it, but I know there's some good stuff in there, so... The uh, the Mogo story that we were talking about last week is in there. The uh... and you got stories in there that you'll pay that price for in an individual graphic novel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. easy. Well, Killing Joke is in there. Killing um, Joke's in there. Whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? Yep. I was something uh, in there. For that, the man that who has everything. Sure. Five inversions. Green Lantern story. Mogo doesn't socialize. There is so much it's quality. Good stuff. In there. Uh, what do you get for the Man Who Has Everything? Yep. That's a fantastic book. He did well. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that'll be good. So, uh, so yeah. So it's a, it's a full crew. I'm excited. I just wish we had better stuff. Yeah. To talk yeah. About. I know. So, it's it's, it's slow. Ne- next sure. week, she'll, it'll be the penultimate. It'll be the amazing. And it'll night, be a so. four-hour show. It will be. <laughs> uh, this this is going to be like 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> not really. I'll find a way to stretch it out. Um, <laughs> literally, it took me 10 minutes to get through the first news item on RFC last week. So. Um, anyway, uh, speaking of news, so let's talk about our news. What uh, what news do we have this week, uh, McField? Let's talk about. Let's uh, get the sad stuff out of the way first. I guess that would be good. Well, hey, we lost lost triplet there. Well, he'll be back. <laughs> that well, is pretty uh, sad. That's pretty sad. No, the first news item is the sad one. We got to get out of the way first. Got to know what it is. That this week, Gene Colan passed away. Gene Colan, one of the true masters of the Silver Age, a man whose name deservedly mentioned in the same breath as John Romita Sr., John Buscema, uh, artist of Daredevil, Captain America, most famously maybe uh, drew all of Tomb of Dracula with Marv Wolfman. Uh, Steve Gerber's heard the duck as well. Uh, an absolute master of his craft uh, at his best better than most at his worst still better than nearly everybody out there a man who had this is my 84 years of age um, uh, he hasn't been well for a while uh, but this is a man who had his talent up until the very end. Uh, he did a one-shot issue of Captain America in in 2009 with Ed Brubaker, won an Eisner. You know, you don't have, you look at that work. You, that's not a man whose work is like you don't look at that and you don't see the work of a man in the 70s. You don't see data work. You see a man who was one of the most amazingly talented people who we ever get the 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 pleasure of enjoying the artwork of. I turned my computer on on oh what day was it? Was it Friday morning? I think it was Friday. And the it news around is the homepage, and I just Gene Colan dead at eighty four, and I just, I just there was a, a little Darth Vader no moment there. Honestly, I I love hmm. Gene Colan. I love Gene Colan's work. I strongly encourage anybody to check out some of the recent paperbacks Marvel's done of Tomb of Dracula, or if you can get a hold of the Howard the Duck omnibus, um, get it because good God, Gene Colan, fantastic man, and uh, a true. Uh, one of the last great masters uh, lost to us, yep. sadly. Telling you, yeah, it's it's sad, and there, you know, I don't know. It's gonna be, it's just gonna be happening more often. You know, some of those, you know, yeah, yeah, time, yeah. But 
But, uh, you know, hey, we honor their work and their work. That's the thing is that their work will, will live on, you know. I mean, you can always go back and read mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff and see, you know, just see some of the awesome stuff they did. So, no, I, mean, I, I Marvel have brought out some paperback collections of, of Tomb of Dracula, not, not essential volumes, like proper original color volumes. And in the course of the last year or so, they've brought out three so far. I don't, there aren't any more on the schedule right now, but I do hope they bring some more out. Um, just, yeah, I haven't read Tomb of Dracula properly previously, and I was just, uh, I'm, you know, just reacquainting myself with Cohen's artwork within this span of the last year and just reminding myself why he was the talent he was. Like, just a, a guy who's like uh, modern printing techniques at the time just could not do his work justice in any way or form. Um, yeah, it's, you know, damn, damn shame. I mean, yeah. you know, 84, I mean, he had a, a decent run, you know. Uh, he, he hadn't been well for a while, but yeah, I think he was. Still a, I mean, he was like part blind out of one eye when he did that. Yeah, Captain yeah, he, he wow. Was, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I've the real I've deal. always heard of his run on on Tomb of uh, Dracula, but I've never never read it. I've seen like bits and pieces of it. I would love to check that out, especially since he re- he did the entire run. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Compared mm-hmm. to a day's artist, oh my god, they can barely get through five issues. So true. Know? In like I mean, a they, year. They've only <laughs> yeah. done like um, three color paperback volumes, but the whole run has been available uh, in essential format, and I believe that there are large hardback omnibuses of the whole thing available as well right now. So it is out there. Uh, I do strongly recommend anybody check out uh, Hired the Duck as well, because that's Steve Gerber. And Steve Gerber is one of my favorite authors, who we also sadly lost a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was one of my earliest exposures to him, was Hired the Duck. And, you know, if you ever if you think of Hired the Duck as like a little funny animal comic, because a lot of people do, if you say Hired the Duck to them, they don't understand what it was. And, um, you know, Gene Colan will prove you wrong. Well, Steve Gerber, the whole package will prove you wrong, but you just have to you just have to look at it and read it. So I encourage anybody to check out their Hired the Duck, that pair's Hired the Duck as well. Um, yeah, but anyway, moving on then, I guess. Yeah. It's, uh, rest in peace, Gene. Pour a little bit out it, for him. Is all I yep. can say. Okay, well, I don't know really where, where you go from there. Um, whoop de doo just Jim Lee's full Justice League lineup has uh, leaked online. <laughs> it, so tell us what you really feel about it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get, it's hard to work up any level of enthusiasm. But um, the image shows us the seven heroes that we already knew were on the team: Aquaman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Flash, and Cyborg. Um, Nicole, you've seen yes. Wonder Woman's new design, haven't you? Yes, I have. Truly, really, you must be overjoyed. She still Wonder Woman. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I like that she's got a sense of fashion and she likes to change things up a bit. I'm referring so, to her so coordination. That, yeah. I'm referring to her yeah. newfound sense of coordination. Right? Yeah, yeah, in terms of she's, color coordination. She's, she's, got all, <laughs> she's got all silver. Yay. Except for uh, her lasso still gold. <laughs> yeah, you can't well, change that. Well, yeah, know, that can't. That that's, that's, let that go because that, that, that's I'm, not her choice. I'm really <laughs> concerned about that top, though. I mean, it's just like, I don't. It sort of defies gravity, really. Wait, wait, you're you're concerned <laughs> about the top? The what? I know. It's just like I don't know. Nah, anyway. I'm but just most like, of she the... doesn't have the stupid uh, '80s jacket thing or '90s jacket. Yeah, the jacket thing, jacket thing is thankfully yeah. gone. Yeah. The jacket is it, gone. It really, definitely. it really does look like these are movie costumes that they've tried to bring into comic books. It's just but, uh, so many raised seams. Yeah, it's. You know, and this just reeks of something that will last for, like, maybe a year, and then other artists are going to get a hold of it, and they're like, oh, I don't have to draw all those lines. <laughs> I will know they're there. <laughs> you just look at Superman's costume, and somehow it manages to look really different without really being any different. Nope. Well, I, mean, I kind of like it. He's got more I... details on his boots, and he's not got his trunks anymore, and he's got a collar, but that's it, you know? But it's amazing yeah. what a couple of rays seems to And look at the Flash, you know? It's like you can't improve on the Flash's costume. No. Um, so they just but you, a couple you can't help but just there. look at his crotch, because it's like it points right to it. <laughs> well, it's, it's the center of the whole image. <laughs> But there is no improving on, on the flash, so you just look at all the uh, a couple of lines on the boots there. Well, anyway, the more important thing about this image is that there are two little banners down the left and right here, which include several <laughs> other characters that we must presume are also on the team. We have um, what appears to be Dead Man, The Atom, Firestorm, uh, Green Arrow, Hawkman, and Mera, 
And then two characters who are a little harder to identify. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're both females. One has a, a big, um, one of those uh, Gambit, 90s Gambit style. <laughs> all in com- oh, oh, mouth. it's Gambit. It's just been proved. <laughs> all right. yeah, yeah. It's oh, Gambit. don't go there. I love Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm feeling like uh, Dr. Light, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, what, what if they could be like new characters? Would DC do that, you think? <laughs> in this, in this, with this relaunch? Yeah, who knows what they could have done. Have, have, have you seen anything new? Yeah. I and mean, this other one, I'm guessing, might maybe be Black Canary, but I don't know again. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks like Black Canary now that I look yeah. at it. She's got a new wardrobe, too. It's, it's, it's the, the woman back. of tomorrow. Oh, that died, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have short-lived JLA yeah. character in nineties. Exactly. So are they going to be like the reserve members, like the Avengers had reserve members? You know, Spidey was an Avenger for years, but he never actually was an Avenger no. until this silly. is this is <laughs> the the secret Justice League of a Amer- with new Justice League of a no. It's the, the, this is the, uh, the the Justice League team we don't talk about. Right. This <laughs> is the street level Justice League team that yeah. You know, Oh, do stop. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had a dark Justice League. <laughs> oh, God. They looked at Marvel and they went, I don't know, they have five Avenger titles and everybody buys them. Maybe we ought to do yeah. that. <laughs> well, they've only got the one JLA title, you know. I, I'm I guessing these are probably just going to be characters who rotate in and out. Well, this uh, this isn't it. JLA, is it? This is just Justice League. When we actually yeah, get, just, JL- when we get JLA, League, yeah. that'll be Justice League Academy. We can't wait yes. for that. <laughs> <laughs> the Justice League <laughs> Academy oh. for the kids. If that could be as good as Justice as Avengers Academy, I'd buy that. <laughs> yeah. A uh, little hope uh, in that realm. But that would take a lot of work to be that good. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I'm still, I don't know. And <sighs> I'm really annoyed by this, <laughs> the, the roadshow thing, too, where they're just basically trying to sell the same demographic that they've been selling to. But whatever. Yeah, um, that's a bit weird. They've said that their target audience is males 18 to 35. Really? Uh, you have that audience, yeah. guys. Um, you're not going to win that audience back, you know? Hey, here's a crazy idea. Let's try boys and girls age 13 to 17. That would be a crazy idea because then you could bring in male and female readers. Perhaps you could also focus on women age 18 to 35. That would be a crazy idea as well um, since you have a lot of loyal female readers. But apparently That's an urban know. legend. Yeah. <laughs> Surely that question. can't be true. What, what do you think the reason of it is having them on two separate panels in the background? Do you think that that, uh, that one's going to be on one team and one's going to be another team? No, or? it's just a symmetry. I, yeah, I think it's just a symmetry thing. Okay. I don't think there's anything to it. Um, and then the other piece of news we have is that we got a new Captain America trailer this week. Yes. Of course. It was awesome. I, I have neglected to watch it again after the first time oh. I watched it. Um, I was not in the best of moods that day, and I, I felt bad because I, I think I pulled – I think I kind of defated deflated Brian a little bit because <laughs> Brian has been, like, a cheerleader for this thing. He's, like oh, – like, He loves the trailer. He does, and, which is great. He is totally invested. I don't give that much of a care about Captain America, to be honest. I don't read it. It's not my thing. It's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's not my thing. And I watched the trailer, and I was like, okay, it was cool. That's all right, you know. And he's like, "Oh my God, it's the best thing ever!" And trying to explain it to me, I'm just like, "I don't know that it's the best thing ever." Oh, but you did, you tell us, did did you make it to Green Lantern since last week? No, yeah. and honestly, I again, uh, my mood this week has been very bad. But and that's I'm just like so disheartened by after after we talked about it on the show last week, um, I was so heartbroken that <laughs> I just I cannot. At least at this point, I cannot drag myself to the theater to see it. God, uh, I, wish, I, think, um, I wish I had after, not missed that chat because I so wanted yeah, to yeah. be here for that. <laughs> I mean, well, after after watching uh, that, I think the the very fact that the Captain America trailer presents a um, heroic hero uh, is, is probably quite warming to the heart, as opposed to the sh- chicken shit douchebag who was the star yeah. of Green Lantern. Like, yeah. like the, the, the scene... <gasps> oh, like, man, you guys are breaking my heart! <laughs> yeah. Like the scene Just in the trailer uh, where uh, Steve jumps on the on the grenade, that right there says enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
a oh. hero before he got powers. That's the thing. Hal Jordan yeah. was an ignorant douchebag before he yeah. got powers. Yeah. And it took him one hour and 30 minutes before he even accomplished anything heroic in the course of that film. See, and I'm still not that excited about Captain America because I guess I'm more excited about Transformers right now. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. but I will get excited once I see Transformers. Yeah, because I think I'm yeah. gonna get through that. Yeah, it's like I couldn't get excited for Captain America right before Thor because I had to get through. See, Thor that's or... how I was. It's just like I gotta get, but you know, my excitement in order. <laughs> <Does that make Yeah>. <laughs> Triplet, since we're not, when, since we have Bug Girl to talk about this week, do you want to share any brief thoughts with us on Green Lantern, Triplet? Since you missed the discussion, last I week? I actually listened to your guys' podcast when I was, you know, that I wasn't there a part of, just to hear what you guys said. I agreed with most of what you were saying, McFeely. So, uh, <laughs> so, so it no, would have been like a repeat of what you were saying. I mean, uh, I feel like. This this movie is was designed so we could get it out so that if another movie could be made, a sequel would actually be good. I could but, see uh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, which, which I read today that they are going to continue with the sequel. Yeah, like, I just uh, read that. It's like, really? Really? Yeah. Are you? You're probably not. You know, you were going to make a whole bunch of DC TV series and you still didn't manage those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would be surprised, honestly, if they decided wow. to. Because I feel like, yeah, it's, it's such a slow... You know, grueling pace to watch that movie. I mean, I was, I hate to say this, but I was very, very bored watching Green Lantern. This makes yeah, me want to cry. I Bet loved it. I had fun. This just makes it, me want to cry. I, I mean, I thought, I thought, like, okay, when I see, like, him, you know, doing stuff with the rain or, like, being heroic, but we never actually see him be heroic that much. Nope. So, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. I mean, um, it's just. It's just, I, I think like it, it it needs to be re-edited. It needs it needs uh, something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and I don't know. I did. I may have mentioned this last week, but like the first superhero comic I ever bought was like one of the issues of Emerald Dawn, and so it's like that's you know that's like the character that's like you know Green Lantern is like so been always really cool to me, and for that reason, and it's just like I just can't cannot bring myself to see this movie right now. Just with that, ugh, I don't know. Anyway. I'm really surprised though that they didn't go the route of just copying Secret Origin. Wouldn't that, or, yeah. or just I mean, first that, flight? That, I mean, that, that would just be yeah. That would have just I like was, first uh, flight is 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 fine. You know, it was the first Green yeah, Lantern. I mean, I I watched like the first about 20 minutes or so of first flight, and I'm like, this would have been perfectly fine because yeah. it's like I said. I, mean, I don't really agree with that. Well, I mean, it, it it could have done with instead of the simulator sequence, it could have done with like a real jet sequence. And then, like, I everything... just, you know, he's got the ring before the credits roll. You know, they, they they actively said when they made first flight that the reason they jumped through all that Earth based stuff was because they'd already done it in um, New Frontier. You know, well, in, that stuff in... needs to come. F- I was reading, I was just reading this week about a first draft for the Green Lantern film where it actually begins with a sequence of Hector, Carol, and Hal as children, and um, and uh, Legion is in Parallax, is in Abensur's ship, and he's the villain along with Hector Hammond, and at the end, Hector Hammond captures all of Hal's family. Uh, you know, exactly everything I was saying, and Hal's ring runs out of charge at a pivotal moment. Hey, oh, that totally was needed. everything I was freaking saying. Yeah. Got, so, that, someone should have been in the movie. But, I, we needed that bad. But see, that's the thing, is that I'm sure that, I mean, that became like a director's choice to come in and like, oh, no, no, we got to explain all this stuff. You know, we got to... And it's, yeah, I mean, it, well, the uh, thing at least it, that... It, 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 and you can't explain it without having to do a... I, well, I think that they could have done a better job explaining it by just how figuring out how to use the ring without uh-huh. going and yeah. they just telling him, well, you know, like, the, how gets in a fight? So what does he do? He makes a big fist. Oh, wait, it must be connected to my head or something. What else can I do with this? And then you there. have a wacky, yeah. wacky uh, yeah. advance for about 20 minutes of what goes through Hal's mind. It would be interesting. Well, and, and then you could have a reason he, for Pie Face knowing about his true identity because he, he helps him with the screaming. Right. Yeah, it would be a bunch of scenes of Hal making things that related to airplanes and women, because that's what Hal Jordan is. Airplanes <laughs> and women. Airplanes and women. The, the thing someone, I... I'm sorry, go ahead, Nicole. Oh, no, I was just saying, so, someone actually said this might be a really good one to pick up as a director's cut to see, like, the little extra scenes yeah. when it I comes out on DVD and Blu-ray. Um... Yeah, maybe to see the cut scenes, and then maybe maybe if we had all the cut scenes, we could re-edit it into a good movie. Um, so, but I, yeah, I don't know. I still have fun with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I think the thing I liked about First Flight and just, like, watching it, and what it sounds like didn't happen in this film is that, 
you didn't really have, it seemed like, a POV character to really latch on to. And that's so big when you're reestablishing or you're establishing an odd universe like this. And it's like that moment in First Flight when, like, he gets, you know, drawn out into the desert, gets the ring, and the aliens talk, you know, Avin Sur is talking to him. You don't even know it's Avin Sur, really, at that point. Um, and he gets the ring, and the thing blows up, and he's just standing there, and he's like, what the hell? Because that's the exact same thing the audience says. Hey, crazy. It's always a good thing when the POV character says out loud exactly what the audience is thinking. Like that, and that's a good point that, you know, to move forward. And if you don't have that, your audience is not going to be connected to what's going on. So, anyway. I was always quite uh, impressed with First Flight because it managed to believably put Sinistro through his arc from good guy to villain without uh, introducing him in a. You know, I always feel like he should be, be in one film, be the villain in the next, but. Uh, which is the route they've gone for with the live action movies. But I always. Uh, First Flight managed to quite successfully introduce him as the good guy and put him through his paces and turn him into the bad guy by the for the end mm-hmm. of the film. You know, it accomplished... I think the thing about First Flight, um, this was what my brother says about it, the, his complaint with this, is that it's it's much more cops in space instead <laughs> of cops in space. Man, they, they should have made it like the cops TV show and have like you know, the bad boys music playing. Oh. And then no, they like, no. just should show up on a planet and then they get like handle uh, domestic disputes with aliens. No, it should stuff. be like chips, right? <laughs> That's oh, that is... <laughs> uh, there you go. There's your prequel, chips, with like Abinsur and Sinestro. <laughs> as... yeah. That's a green. Oh, that'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Green Lantern <laughs> called Chip in that. Yeah, there's a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, there's got to be. So, <laughs> the oh, oh, point, was, the uh, point was of, Chip in the movie, or did I miss him? Uh, I, I thought know. I saw him on like some. I thought I saw him on some of the promotional stuff. I wasn't I went sure if he was like in that background because there's like a lot of GLs a lot in of that GLs background. In Apparently, all I know is that the dude who's just a head wasn't there. That one who's an amoeba wasn't there, and that one that's all made out of crystal wasn't there. Yeah, and those are the three guys that you see in the background of every Green Lantern shot. Yes. I don't know what their names are. I don't care. They weren't in this. Yeah, probably because they're fun to draw and not probably fun to create <laughs> CGI. But um, the point of all of this discussion is that the uh, Captain America trailer is pretty good. You're freaking yeah. right at it. So, because <laughs> we have gone on and talked about it later. But I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to watch that trailer again. I think I was just in a piss mood. and um, But I, I'm, it looks fine. And like I said, so so go see it that. Also managed, uh, thankfully, confirm that Hydra is just a, a, a secret Nazi organization and that they haven't gone the Avengers route by just replacing Nazis with Hydra. Yeah, <laughs> so, punching Nazis yeah. in the face. Woo-hoo. It looked an awful lot like we were going in that direction. I know. <laughs> to start. We gotta punch Nazis in the face. This is Merck. We, we love, love punching Nazi punching. We love punching Nazis in the face. Late it'd be in the kinda, war. It'd be really anyway. disrespectful if they did that. If they just replaced oh, them with Hydra. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Nicole, uh, video <laughs> yes. needs recycled. If you don't mind. The video has oh. been, your video has frozen. So yeah, I love America. Loves punching Nazis in the face. Really late in the war. Anyway, um, to put it in a cartoon. So <laughs> right. Um, speaking of cartoon, I know. Okay, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I've been watching the um, uh, the Earth's Mightiest Heroes Avengers. Oh yeah. Um, and which is really good. Um, just oh got, yeah. Um, I haven't seen the last one yet. Okay, I won't talk about that. But there's the new <laughs> intro. I- I, they, I was at work today when it aired, so I haven't watched it. Yet. They uh, they thankfully have a new voiceover that goes over the shit song. Oh, they do? oh, see, yeah. I like the song better than the voiceover. Oh, the song is so shit. Oh my god, I love I it. It's I terrible. love these episodes when uh, they aired in Australia. So that's an addition for the uh, yeah. American. They version. have the the voice actor that's doing uh, Nick Fury does this voiceover, right. and it's basically the title from the title card, like from the Avengers. You know, there came a day, and there blah, came blah, a day blah. unlike any other, yeah. unlike no other, <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, awesome. But when they're going through and um, naming, like, they name the Avengers, mostly the Avengers, not the Avengers that are in the show, uh, the ones that are in the movie, but um, yeah. they don't name Wasp. Um, I yeah, know. I know. It's just like, I'm a they, Hulk. I know. It's, it's, Hulk, Hulk, it's Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, and um, Captain, uh, America. Captain America. 
They and named them. It's it's, it's kind of like Gilligan's Island. Remember when they did yeah. that? The first and the rest. Part, and right. the rest. There was only yeah. two more. You're yeah, just like, what? I know. It's like, no Ant Man, no Wasp, no Black Panther. But um, but anyway, when they when they're talking about Thor, he they refer to him as instead of the god of thunder, it's the prince of thunder. They leave God out. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Which is kind of odd to me. I was like, it, it's jarring every time I hear it. I'm surprised they didn't call him the Alien of Thunder. Right. <laughs> the highly evolved interdimensional being of Thunder. Of Thunder. So, anyway. Mistaken for prim- by primitive Norsemen as a god of Thunder. Of Thunder. Um, yeah, better than Young Justice. God, you know, Nicole, that reminds me. Um, every week I have a moment of frustration because I'm like, there's a Young Justice in my DVR, and it's like playing the lottery. And I pull it up, and it's not and a it's new episode. Run. And I'm like, there was a, there was a new Young, young Justice, Justice, though. When? Did they cancel no. it, and I just didn't know? No, they're just <laughs> no, playing yeah. reruns. There, ha- there is a new episode out there now, though. A new episode apparently snuck up to the Cartoon Network website and was quickly taken down, but it is out there now. It's called Targets. Go mm. we'll search for it. Huh. And I mean, the cameo meter is off the freaking chart. I watched it yesterday. The show is really good. I like that show, but it's the, but there's I only been six episodes. I do what they're doing, though. Cart- but Cartoon Network, like, everything is on hold at the minute. There's no new Ben 10. There's no new Generator X. There's no new Young Justice. I- I'm wondering if they're... I know we've got this Green Lantern cartoon coming up. That's something we saw this week. was a brief uh, oh, yeah. ad, I saw, ad I saw for the, that. the teaser for it, yeah. There's supposed to be some kind of DC-themed animation block uh, mm-hmm. coming up soon. So I don't know if they're holding off on new episodes to put it on that. We haven't, well, had, a cart- couple, we haven't had a new episode of Brave and the Bold in a couple of weeks, but they're coming out every week on iTunes. Holy crap! Space Ghost! Was in the new episode <laughs> that was iTunes this week. Fucking Space Ghost! <laughs> That's awesome. Oh god, I need to watch it. All I can, all I can, <laughs> the, the, all I can think about is join him. Is Scooby Doo uh, doing the episode also? Well, no, Scooby Scooby Doo has been. <laughs> Scooby Doo has been new for the last two weeks. So. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, Scooby Doo was was in a Brave and the Bold. He needs to be in the episode with Space Ghost, and they have like a, no. a caper or something, you know. <laughs> uh, so, I, wow, uh, well, that's great. It's, it's only the pre credit teaser bit that has Space Ghost in it, but that's, that's yeah, awesome. New episodes of Brave and the Bold are hitting iTunes every week, but they're not actually airing on the channel along with all of their other premiere shows. I don't know what they're playing. I mean, I have forgotten what's going on in in uh, Young Justice. You know, I was watching. The new episode, and I was like, "Wait, why is? Oh yeah, no, but what? Oh yeah, I can't remember." <laughs> I, I point if they rushed Young Justice out before it was uh, before the, the, you know, before they reached a decent level. Because I mean, remember how it came out on that weekend where everything premiered? Prime Pierre premiered, Renegades premiered, uh, the the uh, Avengers two parter, yeah. the Gamma World. It, premiered it was my favorite movie. thing of like the Super Day of premieres. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was so good. <laughs> they just showed the first two, and then they waited a couple of weeks for more. And what are we? It must be two months. It's got to be like three months. It three feels months. like forever. I'm just for what? Since when? Uh, since the last episode of Young Justice. Uh, oh, okay. um, it was. I want to say uh, early, early Easter. I think it was around Easter time, wasn't it? Good lord! It's April at least. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was Easter around Easter. It was like longer than two months. I'm gonna just look that up. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, it's uh, it's whatever it is. It's way too long because it's really only been like six episodes. Who knows what Cartoon Network's doing? It's, it's, on, it's oh my god! Last episode was on at the start of March. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Oh, wow! Even before that, is, that is over. That's three and a half months. Nearly four months. Much but are we surprised that Cartoon Network is screwing around with people's favorite com uh, cartoons? No, I, well, well, I mean, it, uh, this is beyond the pale, though. Yeah, that's a long what? time. Wait, like. like People will lose interest in that if they. That's, I mean, that's I, why I, I thought it was canceled. You know? <laughs> it's been a ridiculously long amount of time. It's been quite a while since the last new Ben 10 or Generator Rex either. But uh, I don't know what's going on with them. They're getting. Isn't Cartoon Network? Aren't, aren't they the ones that are doing Thundercats? Yes, that's supposed that's to happen. Is the new Voltron out? Is that out too? Yeah, Voltron is out. Yeah, what's that on? Is that on Nick? Is that on Nick? It, yeah, it is on it's Nick. Nick. Yeah, I've I watched the first care. couple. Gotta check that out. It's I just want to see it. I just want to see what it's like. So. It looks bad. Yeah, it looks bad. But apparently, Rob uh, Springer is hooked on it. So, oh well, you know that says something. Um, okay. 
but it's just another example of how Marvel is winning in the other media sticks, you know. Yes. DC, I've said it before, you know, it's like uh, it used to be DC was tops in animation, but in the last few years we've had Brave and the Bold, not to knock Brave and the Bold, Brave and the Bold is awesome, but Marvel have done Wolverine and the X-Men, Armored Adventures, Spectacular Spider-Man, Avengers, Superheroes. Hell yeah, the kids. Spectacular Spider-Man, bring that That's back. Right. Bring that <laughs> yeah. back. So we've got this new, and then we've got this new Spider-Man cartoon as well, Ultimate Spider-Man is coming up. Um, seems a bit mistimed now, but we'll get to that later. Um, uh, and what is you know what's DC done? It's given us Brave and the Bold consistently, and uh, it's managed to fart out a couple of episodes of Young Justice before going on an abnormal hiatus. Literally, the yeah. only area of other media DC's winning in lately is direct DVD movies because they can't get uh, this. Comes out of discussion about how they just can't get their live action franchises working either. Yeah. You know, it's like whatever, guys. Just show some more episodes of the fucking cartoon. Seriously. Yeah, this is so hard. Like I know, I'm, I imagine this is more Cartoon Network's fault than anybody else. To be honest, something's up at Cartoon Network because they're showing so little that's new, and they waited so long to show any no Scooby Doo episodes as well. Should they? I know they're showing new ones yeah. now every week. It was all aired in Canada months ago. Could yeah. they be waiting on uh, toys? Aren't there like Young Justice toys coming at some point? I don't know. They would not. They're wait for toys. Come. I would doubt it. Oh, I, yeah. I still say they're waiting for Thundercats. <laughs> Oh. To get it. Well, it's, it's only a couple of weeks. I think it's supposed to be in the middle of July. So. I am so excited for that. I'm so excited for that. Yes, definitely. That trailer. Yeah. That trailer. Is, uh, is, is Snarf going to talk yet? No. Damn it. Well, I, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but, but when we went to BotCon, we got a few, few select of us got to go see the behind the scenes of it. Ooh. We can't say much, but it looks awesome. Nice. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous of that. Oh, uh, man. You can yes. see some of the background, some of the character that's development. Gonna be the, yeah, uh, that's going to be the... That's good. the thing to, to wait for this summer, that that's the new show. But I imagine they'll show the three-part pilot as a movie event in the middle of July, probably repeat it a couple of times, and then we'll still be waiting September, October before the end of Easily. Easily. So, um, <laughs> any other news? Anyway, this, this is a comic. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no more news. Okay. Or how about them comics? Yes, <laughs> comics it is. Um, as we said, we're going to be talking Ultimate Spider-Man, not real Spider-Man, dead. Uh, at the end of the show. At least that can't be spoiled, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And yet it did manage to leak to the Associated Press on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday morning, yes. Tuesday morning. Yes, but and the comic because the comic wasn't even out on Tuesday. No, uh, like not like FF. Uh, when the hell are we getting another FF? Seriously, it feels like it's been forever. Uh, next week. This week. Next week. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. That's week. Next week. But, but um, you know, uh, still managed to leak it even then. I mean, you know, the spoiler of Ultimate Sp- the death of Ultimate Spider-Man is that he dies, but still. Yeah, I mean, <gasps> it's that he actually does die as opposed to. <sighs> You know, not dying, I guess. But, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I comics. think we had kind of considered that. I was going to throw it to Triplet, but uh, Triplet's uh, disconnected for a second. So, we'll, uh, I guess we'll go to Nicole then. All right. Well, so. I'll start off with my quick one here. Like you said, it's been a short week. I picked up a whole whopping four comics. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> and so, the one I'm ta- going to be talking about is the new Cobra. Um, Cobra! Uh, of course, the Civil Cobra. Wars. The thing that ticks me off about this cover is it it's a spoiler cover. Really? You're just like, go, yeah. Go well, on. the thing is, you, they're going through this whole thing, and it would have been so more. Jeez, that's a horrible English. It'd been more exciting Breathe. if they would have showed you that it was Crocmaster, because. Um, Okay, I'll go through it here real quick. Again, you get a bunch of no-name Joes because the whole thing is Cobra's out to kill Joes. So they introduce you to this whole new group of Joes. Uh, there's a couple that some people have heard of, um, but most likely they're going to get killed off because <laughs> that's the whole point of this series. So these are like red shirt, high then die sort of... <laughs> Pretty much. Which nice. That's how it is in, in all, all these different issues is a bunch of – because they, they, I don't know if you can see this in the first panel, but they they say who they are because you'll never learn their names. So they'll well, just put their names on there anyway. So. Wow. Are they are they real Joes or what? Uh, so some of them are uh, – you you've got Breaker. A lot of people have heard of Breaker and Sawdoff. Yeah, some of these yeah. other guys um, 
their names sound familiar, but they're again, no one will be upset if they go bye bye. So <laughs> give me a quick run though until I see if I would be upset. Okay, Breaker. I like you know Breaker. Him? I'm upset. Yeah. No. Okay. What? Go on. Left <laughs> 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 uh, foot. No. Okay, sawed off. No. Knuckles. Not chuckles, knuckles. I was gonna say knuckles. You make to no. <laughs> okay, slammer. No. Stealer. Oh, stealer! I know. What about that? And fireball. And I don't know him or her. It's a she. <laughs> fireball. Well, I knew enough to know it was a she then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, these are like these no-name Joes. Again, they put their names in it so you know who they are because, again, you're not going to learn anything about them. So they find out oh, that – Oh, I know Cobra... her because she was in a Transformers crossover. <laughs> That's why I know Firewall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. they find out that Cobra is down in Panama, so, uh, and it's been a little too quiet down in Panama, so they go down there. Um, and so they run into a bunch of uh, – oh, well – there's one Joe down there, and he's trying to get an SOS signal out, and it's not being reached because it's been breached by Cobra, of course. And basically, he's had enough. He finds some locals, and they're not willing to help unless they pay him, so he just steals their vehicle. <laughs> well, the Joes finally get down to Panama, and they're like, uh, there's nothing going on here. And then there's a massive attack um, that actually is put on. You see a bunch of uh, Cobra men coming out of nowhere and then all of a sudden you see them being attacked by a huge crocodile again you're just like oh sweet people's arms are getting bit off nice <laughs> <laughs> okay and then you see you see a couple other crocs coming coming out of the water so you're just like okay this is awesome but you already know who it is it's the, I mean, the croc master comes up. Well, and he, uh, the crocodiles were a bit of a giveaway. Yeah, but the thing is, you already knew that was going to be coming from the cover. So, the thing is, I love this. You just see, I don't know if you can see this, the croc master right there. He's just laughing at everything. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So, basically, that is, that, that's it. And we have a little side story with Serpentor. Serpentor is planning his little, I'm going to play the mind game with these people. So he's starting with the Baroness, and she, he's trying to give her quote-unquote advice. So the last that you see of him, he's, he's making a call to uh, Pythona, and they actually have a Joe that is on their side. So someone is switching sides. Ooh. So, and that's oh. basically... What is what is Pythona in IDW continuity? What uh, she is just part of Serpentor's people. Yeah, because her... she's not like uh, an ancient snake woman from beyond the Himalayas in this time. Uh, not really. <laughs> 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 Even though I did like her in the cartoons, so yeah, she's just one of, one of the the main leaders of. Her. But yeah, so who's switching sides? Overall, the story was pretty predictable for the the series. Uh, the artwork kind of was lagging in some places. It looked like it was rushed a little bit, but it's got the Croc Master in it. I love this character. So yeah, Croc Master, yeah. <laughs> so I can't say anything <laughs> bad about it. <laughs> but yeah, it was just I just wish they would have put him on the cover because I mean. Our master. Just to see, the first time you see something is you see a Joe getting his arm bitten off by a croc. I would not have pictured that if I did not see the cover. A lot, lot of crocodiles hey, all... lately with G.I. Joe. I mean, like even the yeah, uh, G.I. Joe cartoon. <laughs> biting arms off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? So, How many wow. dismemberments can you get away with on a kid's cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and so the next thing I'm going to talk about, I should have talked about last week when I returned from uh, for my vacation for BotCon, but I'm going to go over it now because you Rub can actually in, pick up. Yeah, <laughs> you can pick up the BotCon exclusive um, online right now. So I'll go ahead and just give you a quick review. If you are a fan of Transformers Animated, you shouldn't just get this. You need to get this. If you are upset that there was no season four, here is your season four right here in this little what. 
26 page issue. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> did, they do, did they do like an episode a page? But no. I mean, <laughs> they start off uh, where season three ended. So I don't know if you can see that. So you have Prime and the team bringing in Megatron, uh, Lugnut, and, and Shockwave oh, okay. into like, being. Right. Right. I mean, it's just like that's where season four would start. Of course, we were able to talk to Derek J. Wyatt, and he was like, this would have been one of the first episodes of of season four. And he was telling us all what was going to happen in season four. And you just see these tears coming down my face like, no. God, that's such a tease. Uh, yeah. I, 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 almost, I almost wish I didn't know now. You know? <laughs> But you There's what? a lot of descriptions in the Allspark Almanac, too, about what season four would have been about. And it seems like this issue is designed to slip in uh, before any of those stories that they described in, in the Almanac. So it's like, yeah, I, I don't imagine the first episode of season four would have featured a bunch of repaint on stunt accounts. <laughs> no, no. But the thing is, I can't wait to see when you have to do this for the wiki, McFeely. <laughs> oh, well, it's all done already. I, I, well, it, I, is, it is. Okay. <laughs> Because there's so much just in each little panel. I mean, oh, I have you, that. you got Sentinel just being the douchebag that he is. You got to love that, you know. Um, but then you, you see where, where the, they're being held. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah it spoil a lot here. That's Trypticon. That's where they're being held at. Um, but I've got to show you just one other thing. Look how cute these guys are. Look, it's the little honeycomb. <laughs> wow. <Minicon. laughs> I mean, they've got so many different details in here. So the little mini cons are the ones that are making sure that these guys don't escape. <laughs> so, awesome. So you, yeah, so that, that's where the start of season four would have been. But then the rest of well, the story. Like, yeah, mini cons, because I remember one of the stories that was going to be for season four. It's like the, the, way, the way the season four opener would have supposedly gone would have been that Megatron would have somehow. Space Bridge teleported the whole prison to uh, to Earth, and then a subsequent episode would have been about the the mini cons that were in the prison getting like reprogrammed to like disassemble cities on Earth or something like that. But the thing wow. that Derek Wyatt hinted to us is that most of season four would have been on Cybertron. It was going to be the whole Cybertron lifestyle, how and how these bots lived everyday life to life. And I'm like, again, another tear. I'm like, oh, I'm like. <laughs> I wanted to know as much as I could f- from Derek J. Wyatt, but then I'm just like, why did this never happen? <laughs> 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 but the, the rest of the story is basically your your generic cop story, but it's done in a very good way. So you've got the older cop who's about ready to retire, who's training the young cop. The old cop is Sideswipe. Um, basically, he is the repaint of Rodimus. Um, but he's got some cool repaints on it. And then, of course, the young bot is Cheetor. Yay! <laughs> and Cheetor! So he comes in. I don't have my Cheetor yet. I, the thing is, I did not want the Cheetor until I, I read it. this. No! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Cheetor comes in, and he's trying to be the hot shot, and he's trying to. <coughs> excuse me. He's trying to do everything, you know. The, you know, just to, to impress everyone. And then, of course, Sideswipe's like, no, you got to do this the right way. Of course, who did they go and arrest first? They go for a rattle trap. Now, you guys know who rattle trap is. It's basically mm-hmm. rat trap. So <laughs> he's basically stolen um, the axe of Prime, of Optimus. And they're like, well, where did you get this from? And so they hunt down Prime, and he's already got his axe. So it's like, Okay, so there's another axe somewhere. And lo and behold, they go and they find out who might have had it before. But we'll get to there. Um, they, they find out that the Stunticons, like that's what they're, they're known for, is kind of like a circus act. And they're doing their practice. And they bombard their practice. And um, they kind of upset about it. And uh, you, you get to see all the different names and stuff in here as well. And I wish you guys could have been there with us when they were doing the reading. Because ah. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, mm. hope, I honestly hope BotCon 
puts the reading up because they had some excellent voice actors for the reading of this comic book. And so now when I see this, I just picture their voices. So <laughs> um, basically, Motormaster, uh, he's the wrestler. You know, he kind of had the Macho Man, Randy Savage kind of voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Dead End, he was the, the beatnik, uh, everything, the emo character. You know, woe is me. And then you had Wild Rider, who was kind of more of the thespian, the Shakespearean kind of voice. Um, Breakdown was just your regular little thug. And then uh, Drag Strip, she was the harsh Brooklyn girl. So, <laughs> hmm. and, um, Morgan Laughling did did her voice. You don't, know, <laughs> you don't know who she is. She was the voice. This of better go up on YouTube. <laughs> because it was so much fun <laughs> uh, Greg Berger is the one that did Cheetor and he did a great job with Cheetor he kind of had a Michelangelo feel to it so um, awesome but and then so you're seeing that their practice and both Optimus and Sentinel Prime is, are, are here um, but I've got to show you I don't I don't know if you can see this but Sentinel no Prime yeah. he, he's got the star scream uh, okay. Shoulder pads. Mm. From when, so, they've got so many different details in this comic book. Um, I don't know if I want to give it all away, but um, just need to go out and get it. Basically, so they're trying to find out who the axe is. And apparently, it's the axe from Toxitron. Uh, Toxitron lost his axe. And um, so instead of using an axe, he uses. I don't know if you can see that. A plunger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, what are we doing? I don't know what happened to it. Toxitron is a very special robot. Yeah. Not really there. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's got ooze coming out of him. It's, yeah. And so a great, great face palm here by Wild Rider. Like, oh, God. Nothing brings joy as a face palm, right? <laughs> So basically, Cheetor gets in their face and saying, hey, you know, we've got questions for you. What's going on? And basically, you, um, in the end, you find out that the Stunticons are running a, um illegal uh, upgrading ring, I guess, where they they're, have they're, they're modding? Is that what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, Cheetor and uh, Sideswipe take in Toxitron to get some information. Well, he's not the brightest of bots. And they're like, you know, we're going to give you uh, 20 decacycles. He's like, no, you're only going to give me 30. He's like, he you know, you're on bizarro to... logic, as I understand <laughs> it. <laughs> so, um, do you want me to, to kind of give you what's going on? I don't know if I want to spoil this because it's so fun. But yeah. Oh, I'll go for it. Okay, so they're yeah. at the arena. Where the the very first show the Stunticons is going to perform, but they've already found uh, through a leak through Toxitron, they found out that guess what? There's tons of explosions. Everyone's going to go sky high. All these people are going to, be, to uh, all these bots are going to be dead, and um, so they need to go out and save them. So, we'll, but again, I don't know if you can see this. I got to pull way back. There's tons and tons oh, of cameos. God, in this cameos. Page. Oh, no. Yeah. So. I mean, you could spend like 10, you know, a good five, 10 minutes just trying to pick out, oh, look, there's there, there's, there's, there's so and so. I mean, you got Roxana, you got Flare Up here, you've got, <laughs> you got Huffer, I mean, you've got Power Glide, I mean, you've got tons of little, little cameos here. So, well. There will be an edition of this released to comic shops through, through Diamond. They normally do a Diamond edition of the Botcon comics, well, yeah. so that'll be, that'll be months away yet. Uh, maybe it's, Dean will have some at Auto Assembly. Oh, you've got to. You've got to pick this up. Well, Toxitron comes bounding and just destroys the whole place. Well, you kind of find out that it's not Toxitron because Toxitron's locked up. It's Prime with the repaint. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so Prime comes and saves the day. And Sentinel's just mad because they ruined his spot in the show. That's... <laughs> Good, good old Sentinel Prime, you know, being the humble bastard he is, right? <laughs> um, so, 
I'll give you just like the last page. Well, side swipe retires and he's, you know, kicking back on the Energon farm and he's like, Oh, I'm looking up at the meteor shower, but he's like, wait, that's not a meteor shower. Now this is the biggest spoiler. So if you don't want to know, I'll give you five seconds. Five, Um, four, uh, two. (laughs) 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 Okay. He sees team char coming down. Team Char is oh, coming wow. down. So, so don't look, McFeely, but look how fun that is. Look at that. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> so, and that is the end. Mm. And then, then if you had the po- yeah, chance okay. to talk to Derek J. Wyatt, you had more information of what would have happened after this. And you're just like... God, oh, wow. why, why, did, why didn't we have season four? Yeah, Damn that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if you are so upset you didn't get a season four, you must pick this up because the artwork, the lines, the details, the background, everything, you can spend at least an hour just picking out the little details, all the cameos and the artwork. I mean, it's just a beautiful – honestly, I would have to say this is my favorite comic this year because wow. it's so well done. <laughs> so. I mean, they put oh, a lot of time. They put a lot of time into this. I mean, it's like I said, it's just beautiful. So, go out and get it. Uh, you can find it on the Transformers Collectors Club. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to get it at like TFCon or Auto Assembly. Um, and hopefully, your local dealers will be getting it too. So, a nice. must, a must. <laughs> so. well, that's awesome. 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 Cool. Uh, all right, so we'll go back to Triplet since we were going to go to you and then you had oh, we lost you. Okay, so I'm not talking Spider-Man, right? We're saving. No, no, no. Right? You're saving that, no. sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll. I bought this stupid comic so I could actually do it <laughs> at the end. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> Did you open it? Because it's in a plastic yes, bag. Yes, you know, I opened it'll be, it. It'll be worth more oh, if you leave it. Worth in the bag. Time. Yes, ten <laughs> seconds. Yes, ten cents at least in the bag. As opposed to not. Well, I'm going to be quick and go back to uh, Superman. We've kind of forgot about him since uh, Straczynski Superman has kind of sucked. (laughs) Yeah. But um, I try to forget about him often. You there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, So basically, this issue has crypto in it. Yay, crypto! Yay. That's the only reason I'm going to talk about it. Now, as I remember, this is a really uh, delayed story, actually. This was written years ago when it didn't see print. I seem to recall hearing that, actually. So This was written, This takes place uh, after Infinite Crisis during the time Superman's missing, right? Yeah, this takes place uh, – it shows you where Crypto was during Infinite Crisis, uh, when Superboy died, and hmm. some other places. So it's kind of cool. I mean, it's uh, not much of a story. It's pretty short. Crypto's lost days. Yeah, I mean, it, it's mostly I just like it because it's Kurt Busiek doing crypto, and uh, we kind of get to see a sad dog as he's like kind of whining. Aww. 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 Yeah. I don't like- sad dog. <laughs> You get this great scene at the beginning where uh, Connor is playing with him and uh, throwing um, a uh, manhole cover. For him to go catch like it's a frisbee, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's basically just like, where was Crypto during all this? Because like, if you remember, Crypto uh, got in a fight with uh, Superboy Prime, and mm-hmm. he like took a pretty hard hit, and and we didn't see him for a while. I mean, not even if we saw him after that, did we ever see him again? Uh, well, I'm sure he's appeared since, but just not right around the end. So uh, it kind of shows that, and like he took the hit, and and like he stays back at the Kent farm, and they talk about how. Oh, he hasn't done anything, you know, for like a week. He's just slept, and you know, he, we don't know if he's all right or not. And then, like, basically, the issue is him just kind of uh, tra- trying to find Superboy. And uh, he eventually, uh, it must be taking place like right after when Superboy died, because uh, when he finds the place where Superboy died, you get this scene where he's um, kind of smelling, and if you can see it or not, there's blood on the ground. And then you get, oh my goodness, this scene where it retails the whole fight. Where Superboy died in Infinite Crisis, yeah. and uh, you get the um, basically um, Crypto knows he's dead, and he does the oh 
Oh. 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 Yeah. And it, it's it's a good, decent issue compared to all the crap we've been getting with Superman <laughs> now. I mean, and it's it's crypto. I mean, that just kind of makes it neat. And so the issue basically just ends with him um, kind of flying around, and he uh, decides, I guess he's just you know, going to wait. I guess he's hoping that you know, maybe Superboy's coming back or something. So he goes and he gets his, uh, his uh, manhole cover, and he goes into space, and he finds himself a little asteroid that – be used as a doghouse, and there you can see his manhole cover sitting next to it, and he's just mm. waiting for him. Wow. Oh. So that's a neat little issue, and I love that little cover with him flying in front of the moon. I just thought I'd talk about it because there's not been anything good with Superman since uh, the Lex Luthor stuff ended. So. Yeah. As I understand it, that was written some time ago, like around the time that, that actually that it was actually set, and it was just it was pulled and shelved for some reason, yeah. and they've they've pulled it out. And I don't know if there's something running late and grounded, or frankly, I wouldn't think they would have time or or space to run anything extraneous right now if they're trying to I wrap guess. everything up. For August. I don't but, even I don't even know if they've finished grounded. I, I thought well maybe this is just like well they know the relaunch is coming and maybe they're just uh, <laughs> putting stuff in you know until it gets time for the relaunch. This, I'm hoping. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I, that, this is Superman editor's version of ah fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would much rather read issues like this than, than Grounded. Oh my god, Grounded's been terrible. Jeez. Yeah, but that's Superman, and it's a cool awesome. issue. So, yeah, if you like crypto, pick it up. Cool. Is that it? That's you? That's, you only have yeah, one that's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, good deal. Um, okay, so I've actually got two comics I'll talk about um, very briefly. I think you're so big. I know, like I'm so cool. <laughs> two um, comics. Brightest Day, Aftermath, The Search for Swamp Thing. Um, this is basically... Uh, Didn't we already find Swamp Thing in Brightest yeah. Day? Yeah. So what's the point of this? Well, because it's not about finding... It's not about bringing him back. This is about... Okay, so... Um, Basically, Swamp Thing's been killing a lot of people. <laughs> Since oh, he came oh. Back. He just oh, really? Like, Is... Yeah, he's been on like yeah. this uh, murder rampage of all all kinds of like eco. Yeah, I mean, he's basically kind of eco- oil executives. Remember the ones yep. that did the yeah, oil at the spill? end of oh, yeah. Day. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, he's just become <laughs> basically an eco terrorist. He's just like killing off a good guy, you know, corporate executives, mob bosses with um, you know. Toxic chemical dumping ties. I mean, he, yeah. So, so he's like the the the, the terrorist version of Captain Planet. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Um, right. So, but most of this issue is basically just telling you how fucking cool you should think that John Constantine is. <laughs> um, does he smoke a lot of cigarettes and look cool? He with his, smokes with a lot of cigarettes. <laughs> he looks cool. He uh, talks to a lot of cool people and uh, does some cool shit. And that's about what most of the issue is. Wow. Um, yeah. I um, think this miniseries was going to be about, like, redeeming Swamp Thing just in time for his relaunch. I think that'll be the thrust. I mean, you know, initially, like, the beginning of this bit, it's, it's been in the back of some of the DC issues. But essentially, Swamp Thing, like, lures Constantine... Uh, to this, uh, to the Royal Gardens, to the Royal Botanical Gardens, and uh, ends up in like infecting him with this, uh, like, I don't know, plant infection thing, which is how John has figured out that something's wrong because Swamp Thing was never like really smart enough to do something like that. Um, to sort of, you know, to get He's him. more man now than vegetable. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is, that had been like Swamp Thing's thing is that he was really, as he, called him you know like down to his artichoke heart he really thought that he was alec holland but this is alec holland with super plant powers and you know that so, is so basically animal. alec holland's a dick and that's why swamp team yeah alec that. holland is a vindictive <laughs> asshole with super plant powers that's you know killing people but like you know one of the things he does is one of the, the first things that he does is tries to track down batman uh as far as what uh John Constantine does. And, like, there's a whole sequence in here where he tries to hail a cab, but the cab is in the middle of being carjacked. And so he, like, throws some enchanted seeds in the carjacker's face and calls him a tosser. You know, there's a lot of... <laughs> American students say tosser. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, look at how British and cool John Constantine is throughout this entire, you know, 
issues. So I, I don't know. I it, it really did feel like throughout most of this issue, I w- they were really trying to convince me that John Constantine is really fucking cool. And that you really yeah. should know that he's awesome. And I'm not saying that he's not. It just, I felt like, it's like, okay, I get it. He's cool. Can he just be cool? You don't have to, like, you know. But it's okay. But anyway, he gets, he, he meets up with Batman. He's trying to track down the Swamp Thing. He takes Batman into the green for a minute. They hold hands and go into the green. Um, what? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Aww. You know, they, and, then, and then they see the is, new... is the green like, like code for something else that I'm not sure of? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently. It's the, it's the life realm, I guess, or something. I don't know what it is. The plant. The life, life way above Earth. Yeah, or okay. something like that. Anyway. <laughs> So, um, but when they're in there, he actually gets attacked by Swamp Thing, which is kind of funny, and passes out. And when he wakes up, hey, Zatanna's there to help. All Woo! right. Now, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> history, of course. <laughs> yeah. They bind. So, so <laughs> that makes it a little bit awkward. Uh, That's how you know John Constantine's coup. Yeah. Cause he's John crazy. Constantine landed Zatanna. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so... Um, and he even makes a point to say to, you know, to Batman, he's like, look, before you invite her in again, just kind of let me know so I can run ahead of time. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, and she, so she tries to help him with his, uh, little infection, um, with a spell, which I'll read it the forwards way, which is, uh, I call upon the powers of the earth to, uh, powers of the earth, uh, heal this sorry excuse of a man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Which, of course, is backwards printed in the comic, because that's how Zaytana works. Awesome. And then the artist had a nice little panel where he gets to show her ass. Woo! Basically, that's nice. the only reason that panel exists. Gotta sell um, the comic. Yeah. Okay, speak, <laughs> speaking of, of arses, here's a fun story. Uh, that's a bad lead-in. I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was reading... Are you um, telling us about journey... your ass? No, not my ass, thankfully. <laughs> uh, I was reading uh, Journey into Mystery, The Lost Gods, which is a Thor graphic novel. Uh, it's about what happened to the gods after Thor went off into the Heroes Reborn universe. And um, I think I mentioned it on the show, uh, Despicable 90s, or a really bad Tom DeFalco 1990s dialogue that somehow wound up being quite good. I don't, I don't know how, but it was rather entertaining. Um, but the art was only credited to Diodato Studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess Mike Diodato had um, a team of artists working under him at the time, um, but there was uh, I and some only and he himself only drew some of the issues. And um, there's one issue that came along, and uh, I, was, I was I thought this is better art than most of the other issues in this. And I read along quite happily, and then it, uh, one of those panels came along, a large framing shot of a woman's buttocks, and I paused for a moment and I looked at it and I went, wait a minute. That's an Ed Benes arse. And I flipped back through the issue and I suddenly realized that the issue was drawn by Ed Benes because I recognized the way he drew a woman's arse. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me or what that says about him, but <laughs> I think it says a lot about both of you really. Um, <laughs> let's just put it that way. Um wow. I recognized an so, anyway, and I think I guess this ends with like a flashback or something of Alec Holland coming back to life or something. I don't understand that part, but because we know that he's now Swamp Thing, so whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, for the most part, it was just about being showing John Constantine being cool, and hey, you can still smoke in DC, so that's fun. Yeah, that's um, a plus. <laughs> you know, at least that's such an integral part of that character. I don't know how, yeah, you know, they could take that away, you know, from the character. Could, but Marvel would do it. Oh yeah, Marvel doesn't have characters like that where it's an integral part of. No, I mean, dude, it used Wolverine to, yeah. can't smoke no more. Yeah. Gummit. Oh, Triplet, <laughs> would you uh, reset your video? See if we oh. can. Hopefully, it doesn't just die. That would be really bad. Um, the other thing that I read on recommendation uh, of my shop owner and said it was the best of the three, which apparently that doesn't say much, um, was the Kid Flash Lost for the uh, oh. Flashpoint tie-ins. Um. I really don't know what to say about this other than, um, I mean, there's a couple of, I mean, it's, it starts out with a basic enough Kid Flash running with Barry, and but Barry's a real dick, and you can't figure out why, until you realize that 
um, uh, that uh, the Kid Flash is in a uh, – well, he's in the Matrix. I don't know how to say it any other way than that. <laughs> yeah. He's really, in the Matrix. <laughs> I am shitting. Yeah, I, took, I took a flip through this. I one am right. shitting you not, people. This is the Matrix. Okay, he's in, <laughs> and it gets worse because then, like, he he doesn't quite wake up at first, and then he does, and he breaks out, and uh, yeah, he's like in the Matrix, run by Brainiac, <laughs> and what? it's the year thirty eleven. But Hot Pursuit shows up. But it's not Hot Pursuit. It's a chick. Yeah. And it turns out to be... What's her name? That we can't figure out if she was pre-existing yeah, character yeah, or not. Yeah. It's uh, this, <laughs> Patty, this I think Patty name, uh, Spivet or whatever. Um, <laughs> and they have... So they have, like, the... Um, the treadmill cycle, whatever they're calling it. Um, but it doesn't the have... The treadmill of time. Cycle. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it but it doesn't have the um, the fuel cell on it, so it it, it does it, it's really no more than like a regular motorcycle at this point. But then uh, Kid Flash has a sort of a earth shattering revelation, which is the fact that the whole reason he came to the past was because of the aging syndrome that he had from the future, and without his connection to the Speed Force, he's gonna die. So, like, the last panel is sort of his hand, uh, I don't know, with, like, you can see, like, the muscle and tendons and things below it as he's basically, like, I don't know, Not so much that he's going to die is that he's going to, he's going to Marty McFly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, he won't exist. So, um, so there's a lot of... of course, the Speed Force doesn't exist because Barry never became the Flash. Right. Whoa. That's heavy. Yeah, check out this uh, page right here. I don't know if you can see that. But, um, yeah, it's very much, I mean, I shit you not, this is the Matrix. I mean, <laughs> there are there are people in the little bubbles that are being used for power. I mean, this is like a downtown shot of, um, like, Metropolis with uh, the, um, I guess that's a Brainiac head on top of the Legion building. So who wrote right it? Who's the writer on this? Um, it was Sterling Gates. Ah. So... Yeah, I mean, but it was, I mean, I was really sort of appalled at how much of a Matrix ripoff it really was. Um, Bart so. grew up in virtual reality before the Matrix was a thing. True, and I'll give it that, but in terms of the art style and, and the way it's presented in this, I don't see the reasoning for making it look so much like the Matrix. It could look completely different, and I wouldn't have, I don't know. I mean, when, and I, I guess that's well, more like, artists is right down to the machinery it. and the color <laughs> points. I mean, are exactly like the Matrix. I mean, it's looks like Brainiac's color. Eh, I guess so. I mean, it is. It just seems like a rip. I'm just. I don't. I, I mean, I don't know how to say it any other way. I don't. It doesn't so, uh, matter that the two things are the same. It just. I I think we can agree that the Wachowskis ripped off Brainiac when they made the Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> I think. I think though. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but I think <laughs> that's probably more true than I'd like to admit. Um, but I, I can at least say that it's like, I want to read more of it though. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I am interested where this story goes more so than maybe some of the others. But, um, I mean, it seems like it's a nice story to stand on its own. That's not going to require a lot of the other, um, a lot of the other stories because it does take place so far in the future. So anyway, so yeah, but the and idea it, here is that Bart has managed to survive briefly because he, what he was what he was teleported back to the future somehow, and that's <laughs> yeah. And I that's think why, and the, uh, he hasn't been overtaken by the changes made to time yet. Yeah, because he does. I mean, he does sort of. Ret- so I guess you know they've sort of said that that uh, Barry and um, uh, Booster are the two characters, at least in the present, that remember. But he does seem to remember before the time change as well. So, so yeah, so he is sort of unchanged. But, yeah, at some point – and, in fact, there's a lot of points in here where he's referred to as a time anomaly. And it seems to be why Brainiac is studying him because he's a time anomaly. Well, that's anomaly. what Hot Pursuit said. 
Right, and 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 that's it, even it what the flashpoint. That's even what this uh, Patty is even saying as well, because I think she's from the present as well. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be our Patty, the Patty that we just saw in Road to Flashpoint. Like this, this is uh, maybe the Patty of the altered timeline or something. I don't really know yet. I thought it was the other way around. I thought the Patty that we, I thought this is the one that we saw before, and then well, she seems to know an awful lot. For, and where'd you get the motorcycle from and everything? If it's her, um, from. Uh, police custody because when after uh, after oh, did she say that? Yeah, it says it in the comment. Oh, okay, then fair, fair enough. Yeah, I said, so, 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 a, so this is the, the friend that that came to town in the last issue of Flash, I guess, to meet yeah, Barry. Yes, yeah, that person. Okay, yeah, so I think she's actually from the the past. I think this is the yeah. Okay, one. yeah, you're probably right then. So I may be wrong, but I don't know. But I mean, otherwise, why would she have all that stuff? Because that would have. No, that yeah, that yeah. makes sense. So, anyway, so there's my two. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily you need to pick up either of those, but you know, if you so want the flash did, story, did check no it out. one get the uh, the Scott Collins written uh, reverse flash flashpoint? You know, comic? I I I would have gotten that if I'd known Scott Collins was writing it. He was not the writer listed for that one shot in previews. Oh uh, really? But I, I I took a flip through it, and uh, actually, it's it's. Mostly, it, it's it's. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be important because Jeff Jones wasn't writing it. It was a pretty decent thing. I just I give it a speed read, you know. But yeah. um, it's just uh, it's the the Reverse Flash um, watching his life play out in one of his little travels through time, see how his life goes. Um, basically, post resurrection, looking back over his life and seeing how he can mess it up. He he goes back and he uh, makes Barry's best friend. Uh, he he makes uh, Barry's life miserable at school, setting up all these horrible things that happen to him. Then Barry gets a friend who gives him comics, who makes his life better. So he makes the friend disappear in that way that he does. <laughs> you know, so Barry's life is shit, and then it ends with him opening the door and going, "Time to die." Mrs. Allen. And, uh, oh, you know, wow. Story leading up of how <laughs> Professor Zoom decided to kill Barry's mum. So not really important, not very much new information. Um, decent, decent little story. And if I'd, uh, I would actually put it down on my list if, um, if I'd known Scott Collins was writing it, but uh, uh, not a key stepping stone at all. Ah, so. All right. McFeely, you that's you, sir. Well, I just got Thor. I just got through because I got a couple of things. What other things I got? I, I got, think we all uh, got. I'm only doing it because I got nothing else. I got uh, Secret Avengers, which is a fine issue, but not nearly as entertaining as Giant Stone Robot Lincoln and the Ghost of Abraham uh, and the Ghost of, of George Washington. <laughs> um, second issue of Mystery Man continues the good quality of that comic. Talked about the first issue not very long ago, so I'm not going to talk about this one again. But that carries on being good. And the final issue of Carnage. That series didn't turn out so great. It was grand. It was a Zeb whale, so I, it wasn't as good as I was expecting from from the author. And the, so they're going to so do another that series is finished series. now. Yeah. yeah, it was a five issue miniseries, but there's going to be oh. another miniseries starting later this year called Carnage USA that picks up from where it leaves off. Uh, I mean, uh, we end it with you know we got another symbiote by the end of the story. And it's like did we really need more of those? Jeez. So the only thing I've got to actually talk about this week is Thor. Uh, the Galactus Seed Part 3 helpfully prefaced this issue with a little note that says, this story takes place before the events of here itself. So that's nice to know. Hey. Um, we open with Volstag. Like, it's like the world has suddenly realized how awesome Volstag is. Because he, everywhere you turn, it's Volstag. Now, he's always the one doing the jaunty thing at the start of an issue, or the one providing the subplot in Asgard, you know? Whatever happened to Balder? I mean, he died, but that's, you know... <laughs> uh, you know, it's like Volstag is the, is, your, is the POV Asgardian these days. He comes a sauntering into Broxton with the intent to educate <laughs> them in the culinary arts. Volstag, the tremendously wealthy of work. <laughs> Am I not a legend of leisure? <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, that priest that we've met before um, has rallied up his followers for a peaceful uh, request that Volstag get on out of it. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this priest because he looks damnably sinister in a couple of these panels, and he looked sinister in a in the past issue or two too. But he seems well, do you quite. Remember the one, one of the past issues they had him lit and his hair yeah, and back there looked, looked like little horns. Little eyebrows, like there's a couple of times mm -hmm. in this one, his little eyebrows flick up like little horns. But he seems mm -hmm. quite genuine in his beliefs. He seems like a man with genuine beliefs. But this is a good morning, brother. Have you heard the good? I just think of him as Irish because all priests are Irish. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure he's more of a, of a where what the hell do you sound like in Oklahoma anyway? Imagine him with JD. No, I do I do not even have an Oklahoma accent, so you well, don't even have Oklahoma. priests in Oklahoma, so come on. <laughs> yeah, well this guy's turned up from somewhere. Have you heard the good news? Yes, of course. Bullstyke has come to make deer omelets and blood sausage. The news is spectacular for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the news of Christ, he has risen. Really? Good for him. I look forward to finally meeting the man. <laughs> That's brilliant. He just saunters on by, not a word of it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, they they convince him. Well, it's, um, what's the name of the guy? It's uh, it's Bill Senior, conv- just spells it out quite simply for Volstagg, and he leaves. Um, but that's that's just the opening sequence, because Thor is... Um, throwing down with the Silver Surfer, who explains that he has come to take the seed taken from the root of the world tree because Galactus believes that he can feed on the energies of that seed forever. He won't need to kill any more planets, he believes. He will be able to feed on the seed and and just exist forever. And of course, this will save millions upon billions of uh, unknown lives. But Odin's not having it because he's viewing this as Galactus taking the coward's way out and wanting to bring godhood upon himself so that he can live through into the next life beyond all gods. And that's just Odin's egotism at work again. But you know, he calls the Silver Surfer a great and gleaming gimp. So that's <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> they, they came up with some very clever names in this issue. <laughs> so. Yes, there's a lot of little bits like that. Space Angel. What is this naked, shining madman talking about, Father? You bald and glinting bastard! Lines <laughs> like that. Really rich. Uh, Volstagg is running back towards Asgard, saw drawn, bellowing, telling his fellow Asgardians that it's war against Broxton, but they've got other things on their mind. <laughs> There's a Oof. fantastic scene of a hungry Galactus just sitting on the moon. Oh, th- I love that! That was so pretty. Uh, anyway. Very well designed. Next wow. to the moonland site, just sitting there, very sullen. Galactus is obviously not not at his best right now. Interesting scene then, followed up where uh, Loki tries to sneak into, well, he sneaks into Sif's bedchamber and seems to, he tries to cut her hair. I'm not sure why he's doing this. I'm pretty sure it'll come into play. Yeah, later. But she wakes up uh, and uh, again, well. like he's trying to do that again. Or? Yeah, that's why I'm puzzled. You know, I'm, I'm, there must be some reason for it. He just manages to snip off a tiny little sliver. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but S- uh, Sif leaps up and grabs her sword, uh, butt naked sword to Loki's throat. You know, Sif, I, uh, sorry, I ill struck your blanket. <laughs> and then Sif goes, the blanket, the blanket <laughs> or the blade. I made my choice. Now make yours. Shall I split your face twain like a melon, or, sur- or cram my sword down your liar's throat? Um, neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, I love the little Loki. I love the yeah. little Loki. <laughs> I'm glad that the uh, the two writers who are dealing with this character manage to to have this. Um, they, they're managing to to keep the depiction of the character very solid because, like, after we've seen some of the. Not contradictions, but the the very different takes that uh, the two writers, well, basically that Matt Fraction has had on what Kieran Gillen was doing with Loki, and also what Bendis had uh, on Loki during Siege. It, I, and I, I like that I, I feel these these mash together. Um, oh, we're just the Loki's got a scheming side in play and journey into mystery, but he, he's entertaining in this as well. And uh, Thor is still bleeding, glowing energy out of that wound as uh, the gods set off to confront Galactus, and that's where our issue ends, on a cliffhanger. Now, I have to say, I think this is the best issue of uh, Fraction's Thor so far. It's uh, entertaining, and there's uh, plenty of action in it, and uh, it's just gorgeous to look at as well. It feels like things are moving, you know? I mean... um, I think that our negative reaction to the first issue of the Mighty Thor was magnified by the fact it was issue one when it wasn't yeah. really. You know, mm-hmm. the next issue of that is a very poor introduction. And of course, as I when I was re- reviewing um, his first Thor, anyway, we all agreed it started really well and then just fizzled out by the end. But maybe he seems to be finding his footing again with this one because there's, there's a 
Go oh, I was just going to say, there's only one problem I had with this issue, mm -hmm. and it's uh, Fandral. He looks too big. He looks massive on that page. Yeah, <laughs> but he, he, is that wearing a big, he is wearing uh, big armor. Yeah, it, it, it just threw me off a little bit. I'm like, is he really that big? <laughs> so That's the only problem I have with this issue, though. Come on. I'm stretching the, it here. Putting the armor on, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he, he he's just looks really big. On big, brawny armor. So I think that's just casting some shadows there. But uh, there's there's just a lot of uh, really like sharp dialogue in this one as well. You know, not quite as witty as I think Journey into Mystery is being. I don't like endlessly comparing them, but I think it's kind of hard not to compare them when it's the other Thor book and it's got Loki in it. You know, and uh, yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of sharp dialogue, a lot of good insults being thrown around, some genuinely funny bits with Volstagg as well, and um, of course, gorgeous art. There is one panel in here that just amazed me. It's the one part with uh, where Volstagg is walking down the street, and it's oh, like he turned it upside. Awesome. That was an awesome yeah. panel. Like kudos to whoever it's who like, thought of it, that. It's a whole panoramic panel where the bottom is upside down and Volstagg is the right way up, yeah. like it's this globe, like it's the curvature of the Earth. Because uh, I was looking yeah, at that, I'm a, like, oh, that's yeah, cool. But then you turn it upside down, and you're like, yeah. oh, that's even yeah, more cool. <laughs> Like I spent a minute or two just just looking at that. It's like it's like I don't know. It's like the curvature of the Earth, or like a fisheye mm -hmm. lens, or something. It's really great. I love it's that, like that you that can imagine this long, awesome. fat man just running alone down this really long road, shouting all the way, pointlessly. <laughs> the images yeah. are good. Death to the tiny men of Broxton! I the love that. The tiny point. men of Broxton are coming for us all. <laughs> <laughs> And Volstagg, right, just as everybody's preparing to head off, but uh, nope, there's like, yeah, we, we've got better things to be doing, Volstagg, and Volstagg's like, right, well, I'll go and take care of this alone, shall I? The great Volstagg shall stand alone against the assembled <laughs> death legions of Broxton. Quality. Mm. He's off to do that while everybody else goes off to fight Galactus, so I imagine that's our subplot <laughs> for the next <laughs> issue. Yeah, I would definitely say that's the best issue of, uh, certainly the best issue of the Mighty Thor, probably the best issue of Frection's run on Thor so far. So uh, uh, hopefully then he's really finding his feet with this now and it will continue to improve because it has to go up against Journey into Mystery as far as the Asgardian stakes are going and I know which book is winning for me so far. And it ain't this one, but this was a good issue. Trip, yeah, I like this Come issue was good. Yeah. I'm back, yay! Just yay. in time to miss Mighty Thor. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I kind of liked Mighty Thor. What did you guys? Yeah. Did you guys hate it? Saying no. I was oh no, saying I probably, love. Probably the best issue of Fraction Story yet. Oh yeah, I love the the comments that uh, they make about the uh, the Silver Surfer. Oh my god, what do they say? Oh what yeah, it? all the glinting bastards. What, and all yeah, what, what what the hell is yeah. this naked, shiny madman talking about, Father? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh. that was good. That was good. Yeah, so I didn't really uh, read anything else this week, but I did get Phoenix Wright Manga, which I haven't read yet. Ah. I will be reading that, though, but I haven't read it yet, because Phoenix Wright how, is... How do, you, how do you say object in Japanese? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, there have been some... There have been two previous volumes of Phoenix Wright Manga done by uh, Dale Ray, but they were just uh, a collection of uh, like dojenshins, like um, shorts done by professional manga artists, like little little like, official fan comics done by manga artists, comedy things. This is the first volume actually put out by Kodansha, which is the first volume of a real series where he is going to get behind the bench and sort of do law things and everything, so there will be real law happening in that. And I also read the first volume of uh, John Byrne's Sensational She-Hulk this, uh, this week as well, which was That's high good. End. Actually, there's no, there's no, there's no more volumes on the on the immediate horizon, unfortunately. But after just reading Joan Byrne's uh, classic thing a week or two ago, and left with the strong urge to slit my wrists, it was so depressing. It's amazing. <laughs> it was done by the same guy, and it's so much lighthearted fun. Man, I, um, I love his uh, She-Hulk. It, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed I it. Haven't, a lot. I haven't read it thoroughly or fully before, and I, you know, I got. I this, don't like uh, it as good as Dan Slott She-Hulk because oh, Dan Slott She-Hulk is fantastic. But it was fun for its, its a time. Kind of thing. Yeah. 
It's really weird. That it's, I, I, I wondered if it was just a, 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 um, a tick of his uh, Superman writing when I read a lot of his issues in one go, but no, John Byrne truly does just uh, tell a story across 20 pages and then spends the last two uh, having uh, the cops stand around or the supervillain captured and then explaining everything that happened in the story. Yeah. Like the end of every John Byrne story is going, here's why I did this, and this is why that happened. But what about, <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it was because of this. That's how every John Byrne story is weird. No, but very interesting. But yeah, that was it. Mighty Thor was all I had uh, this week. I'm going to have some odd stuff for you, for, for you next week, but I'm not telling you what it is yet. Next week's going to be hopefully crazy because we're just... Yeah, well, I'm going to so have little... some weird, uncommon things. Ooh, to talk about. even better. So, yeah. good deal. Pick up odds. Triplet, hopefully yeah. your connection holds up, buddy, because this is uh, this is all uh, you, this man. This is for you. Well, Sky, this Skype, is... Skype has just been crap. I'm selling my stock. I've had stock in Skype. We're... Yeah. <laughs> we... Hold okay. on, I, I just have to open my digital copy of Ultimate Spider-Man that awesome. I have to legally download because Diamond didn't put it I in my I box for that. this week. Yeah, I kind of wish I would have done that now. So, so um, did it become? Uh, did you get it polybagged? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a scan of the poly bag. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Diamond no, no, didn't put this in my order this week. Is the one comic that was missing out of my shop's order. All wow. my copies. No, nobody got Ultimate Spider-Man this week. Uh, it'll be it. Uh, I'll get my replacement copies next week, and I will buy it. So, you know, I'm not crazy. doing this instead. I will buy it, but it's like, fuck's sake, guys. Seriously. Th- At least this was like the only... That was all I said to myself. This was like the only reason I went to my comic shop on Wednesday, so to make sure I got a copy of it. Yeah. But, yeah, JD, uh, did you read this? Yes, I've got it. Read it. Okay. All that. So. <coughs> yep, there it is on the screen. Ooh, without oh, the poly bag. I opened mine. Mine's worthless now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> the bag did much. <laughs> this anyway. is not an issue that involves a lot of plot. No, um, not really. No, I, yeah, I mean, I'll let you review, but I, I was, we were kind of talking about it a little bit before the show, but it, I, I kind of compared it to, like, the breaking of the bat issue of Nightfall, where it's kind of like everything was building to that point, and it's like, oh, oh, it happened. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's eerily similar to a comic from the 1990s. Yeah, it is. is like, you know all that stuff we've been waiting to happen? There you go. There it is. It happened. <laughs> Congratulations. I hope you and he basically it. did it to himself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, I didn't have to buy this anyways. I could have just read the spoilers <laughs> online. I think well, you could have read the title and probably been yeah. <laughs> The spoiler of the death of Spider-Man is that he dies. Right. Yeah, spoilers, kid. That, that's what happens in this issue. I mean, I wish that God... I mean, okay, we know, knew it was coming. They, they told us for, what, like six issues? Five issues that, hey, Death of Spider-Man, that's what it said. And before that, there was, like, pr- the prelude to the Death of Spider-Man. Right. So probably even more than, than five or six issues. It's still, like, when it happens, I was like, so is that it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, you get to the end, you're like, oh. I mean, well, give, give, give us a rundown of just exactly, run down the issue for us. Okay, so, like, basically, uh, the beginning of the issue, uh, Mary Jane's obviously freaking out because she knows that, hey, Sinister Six, they're, they're like, you know, attacking Peter. She's trying to find him. She sees uh, the, the strike of lightning, and she basically knows, hey, they must be nearby because, you know, lightning doesn't come from the ground. It, you know, it comes from the sky normally. <laughs> but uh, so she she's trying to leave the house to go and find him. Uh, th- we basically find uh, Peter being pummeled by Green Goblin, which is how the previous issue ended. The Goblin's woken up, and he's pissed. And, oh, yeah, look at that. Double page. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of those this issue. A lot of those, yeah. And I don't complain because it's Mark Bagley, so that's that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a big fight, basically. I mean, that's all yeah. it is. It's just a big fight. And, and we kind of want that. I mean, we, we want a story. We want something interesting. Uh, but we do sort of want that big fight. I mean, I mean, when it comes down to it, we want to see Spidey, you know, kick Green Goblin's yeah. ass. If you want to sell us on a death, Make it a real like Spider, a Superman versus Doomsday all out slugfest. So we buy it when it happens at the end. It's like nobody believes uh, uh, Human Torch is dead because there was no big battle. It all happened off screen, off panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, there's a lot of uh, ass kicking. Uh, <laughs> speaking here. of uh, Human Torch, uh, Spidey, 
Spidey realizes he can't, you know, beat Goblin, you know, Green Goblin because he's in horrible shape right now. So he, he gets Johnny to wake up and he thinks, well, maybe Johnny can help him take him down. And uh, Human Torch, you know, attacks him and kind of doesn't have the effect that he was hoping for because <laughs> it supercharges Green Goblin. Uh oh. Over 9,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's exactly like and that. And it also seems to uh, give him the power to grow back his broken horn. Yes, no, it didn't, yeah, it, it does it. do that. I don't know if that's an art that. mistake or what. We'll, we'll say it gave him regenerative powers and he can yeah. grow it back. We'll, we'll be okay with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's like, a, like again, just a big fight and then you back and forth. You know, I'm going to kill you, Parker, Peter Parker. And Spidey's like, you know, okay, you know, but could you do it quieter? You know, <laughs> or, or he makes comments like that. And then, like, out of nowhere, like, Peter looks like he's given up. He's just, he's, he's tired. He, he can't take it anymore. And then out of nowhere, Mary Jane hits him with a truck. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, boom, there it is. And not a scratch on her face. That's amazing. Of course, well, you know, airbag, airbag saviors. Yeah, because yeah, that doesn't mess your face up at all. <laughs> not in the comics. Not in the not comics. Comics, no. So, like, after, apparently, all you need to do to defeat the Green Goblin is hit him with a truck because now he's like pretty beat up. He's bleeding pretty bad. Uh, he, he's under the truck, and he's like, "You know, this is the day of reckoning, Parker. I'm delivering God's message. God wants this to happen." When, when did he become like a crazy religious? Part of this. Uh, part of this story. Freak. I don't remember. You know, you uh, started talking about God in the, at the start of this story. So basically, uh, Peter picks up the truck and slams it on his head and says, "Shut up." <laughs> And the goblin keeps talking. I will destroy your family like you destroyed mine. I will kill everyone you know. And that's where he makes the comments like, yeah, could you do it quietly? You know? <laughs> the truck explodes. Spidey gets the gets a huge brunt of the blast. Of course, you know, the blast you know, it looks like it's killed Green Goblin. You know, that's what it looks like because he's like he's on fire. He, bloody you know, hand hanging his in bloody the head. Yeah, it's hanging down. And it kind of looks like, you know, the explosion's like the last straw. That's kind of like what it does does it in for, for Peter because he's on the ground. And and uh, Johnny says, I think you got him. And he's like, good, yeah, that's that's about all I had, you know. Yeah. And, and then, like, you know, basically the, the rest of the issue is like, you know, we got to get him some help. Got to get an ambulance here. And obviously, you know, that ambulance doesn't come. But we do get this one last moment, which kind of for me makes the issue pretty good. I mean, I enjoyed this moment. Mm -hmm. Where uh, uh, Peter's on the ground, and everybody's, like, you know, crying, upset about on him, you know, trying to get him some help. And he says, it's okay. I did it. And they're like, just hold on. The ambulance is here. Don't you see? It's okay. I did it. I couldn't save him, Uncle Ben. I couldn't save him. No matter what I did, but I saved you. I did it. I did it. And then he just he just dies. Oh, wow. That's it? That's yeah. Final words, huh? It's kind of sad. Mind you, the proclamation of his death is trained medic Johnny Storm putting his ear to his chest. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not the most scientific. You of, know, I, I you wish know. I could have more of a reaction to this, but it's like, wow, really? That is, you know, I mean, it's like the circumstances of it, totally get it, totally with it, yeah. But um, if all you're going to do to proclaim his dead is to have Johnny Storm put his ear to his chest, uh, I believe Brian, Brian just said something in the chat there a little earlier. What was it he said? Peter is five seconds of CPR away from being in a new number one. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as as, as solid a a an ending as it was, uh, I, I can't buy the death. Coupled then with the final page, for a blue. Oh yeah, the uh, final page is a close up. Of the Green Goblin burning in that mess. And, and he's it's Norman, smiling. Right? he's human again. Now, yeah. yeah, he's Norman again. He's no longer the Green Goblin. And he's smiling. His mo and it's not that he's just died smiling. It's that his mouth twists into a smile. So if yeah. I'm supposed to infer from that that Norman is still alive and that Peter has died and that he's still alive, then I don't believe Peter's dead. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. believe that he's dead either because, like, today I talked to Brian about this and he made the comment that in a very Bendis fashion – We'll probably get a comic that's like five minutes later, and then the ambulance yeah. arrives, and they resuscitate Peter Parker. And he was right. fine. He, but he's, he, yeah. medically, he medically died for five minutes. It wasn't a lie. It wasn't a lie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I guarantee we're going to be getting in that comic. Maybe maybe not You know, when it comes back and, and we get that new Spider-Man, but 
it'll be it'll be a point where we'll the, uh, we'll get a comic. Shocking, the shocking final page of New Ultimate Spider-Man number one will be that Peter Parker is still alive. Like yeah. he'll be like, he'll this just is the sw- ultimate universe, and they have killed people, and they have stayed dead. But I just don't buy it, you know, because Peter slammed the truck so hard that it exploded in his own face. That's how he died. Peter yeah. blew his own face up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, now granted, like he only died from the explosion because the Punisher shot him. So basically, the Punisher yeah. killed Peter. Punisher killed Spider Man. He, he was any- he was bleeding. He was hurt. He didn't go to the hospital. I mean, that all you know was part of it too. But still, I mean, Brian made the but, comments. I mean, Brian made the comic that he. Parker can't be dead because if the comic ends with a close up of Norman Osborn smiling, then basically Norman is it's, it's construed that Norman won. It and he said that's, that's a that's yeah. a big downer, and that's why you know, Peter can't be dead. Right. It invalidates the action he did. Like if he, if he died killing Osborn, like that would make it worthwhile. And if, I mean, you know, maybe that's just Osborn just smiling as he dies. Whatever. Like he sm- dies like victorious, like that. But yeah. it's you know I can't tell if I'm supposed to infer from that that Norman is still alive then that's a big donor I don't really believe Peter's dead I you know, I, I mean the whole to be honest like it's been a solid st- I don't think this issue would mean anything to anybody if they if they hadn't been reading Ultimate Spider-Man for a long time yeah. you know because this nope. is the big oh, darn, the <laughs> nope doesn't mean a damn hey, thing hey, to me yeah. <laughs> I can attest to that doesn't mean a damn thing to me I read it and was like <laughs> I don't care <laughs> but I think the whole crossover has been pretty badly tainted from the clumsy and unnecessary. Avengers tie-in thing. Oh, God, yeah. Because that That... miniseries has had nothing to do with this comic, and we talked about it before, whenever, like, there's no correct order to read those in, because it's like, if you read the Avengers one, and Spider-Man swings in, then Spider-Man swung in out of nowhere, and that's not a fine, that's not a dramatic last page shocker for Avengers. But if you read Spider-Man first, then suddenly there's something happening with the Punisher and Spider-Man's randomly shot by the Punisher because he decides to intervene in something that is not part of his own comic. And if you read either one of them first and there's no shock ending in the other one because you've already spoiled it, it was just a mess. And the yeah. fact that such a pivotal thing, like the actual wound that would ultimately be responsible for taking his life, is inflicted in this baffling, unnecessary tie-in thing that there's no good order to read them in, and has, that one has nothing to do with the other, just taints the whole thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I did this I another one where it's so, like, I don't know why I'm being so cynical about it, but I was really cynical about whatever it was we talked about last week as well. Oh, Bucky's death. Yeah. I was really cynical yeah. and miserable about that, not like it in the way I did. And you know I'm not that guy traditionally, but yeah. whatever it is, the deaths they're pulling lately are not resonating with me at all. Johnny Storm, yes, please, more thank you. New issue next week. I'll have it now, but please like to. <laughs> right. Um, well, kind of talking about it from this point, I mean, we know there's going to be a new, different Spider-Man that's coming up. I mean, are they going? Like, I mean, is this basically the ultimate Spider-Man ver- equivalent of a Nightfall, where maybe... You know, Peter has died, and he'll be not dead for a minute, but not able to be Spider-Man, so someone else is going to fill those shoes for a while. Okay, okay, what what if it's this? this? What if it's, okay, who's living with them? What if it's Johnny Storm, Iceman, kind of crossways between you being Spider- I'm Spider-Man Tuesday, and I'll be (laughs) Spider-Man Thursday, you know? (laughs) And and then then, then we find out at the end of the issue that, hey, Peter Parker's alive, and he's just, you know, he's hiding out. Everybody yeah. thinks Peter Parker's it's dead. Yeah. His family, they've they've left, but you know, the world still needs a Spider Man, yada yeah. yada. And he's know, gonna train in. and get stronger or whatever while he's yeah. gone, you know. And like, this this happened to the real Spider Man one time before in the late ninety nine it was, when uh, they they ended all the spider books and they said, Oh, Spider's retiring and he burned his costume and everything. Then they did the relaunch. Like they, they they had what they have at the time, they had sensational Spectacular, Peter Parker, and Amazing, and they ended everything, and they just relaunched Amazing and Peter Parker. That was the dreadful Howard Mackie, John Byrne relaunch. Um, yeah. But it started out, and it was somebody other. It was there was a new. It was Peter's life. Peter got a new job and everything. But there was a Spider Man going around, and we find out two issues in who it was. It was Matty Franklin, J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, it was it. Spider He's, Girl. Or yeah, woman the girl who would she, become. Yeah. Who would be. Uh, who, yeah, she the, the, the yeah, she became, became Spider, Spider Woman. Spider, Spider, she, she she, died, no, yeah, Spider Woman. Thank you. Yeah, yeah she was woman. She, yeah, yeah, okay. Nobody ever liked her, and she died during the Grim yeah. Centennial. Um, <laughs> but that's all I can think of is that you know the big twist will be that oh, it's a check in the suit. That'll be the new Ultimate Comics twist, and they'll be like, oh, <laughs> or, or Kitty Kitty Pride might come back or something. 
I yeah. kind of have a feeling that when that Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon comes back, we'll be getting Peter Parker back around that. Yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Funny how that would work out. Yeah. Miss hmm. Time, as I said, yeah. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I just. I wish I, mean, I could say better things about it. I mean, it's a pretty decent issue altogether, yeah. but taken as a whole, the story just. They're just they're just enough wonky moments for the story to not ring true. Like, that my last moment with Peter and Aunt May. That was, that was pretty good. You know, when the actual oh, yeah. fight itself was solid, but the idea that Norman has won, coupled with the really bad Avengers tie in, throwing off any kind of central focus to the thing. Is just I'm not I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with it, and I know it's, I'm being uncharacteristically cynical, but I don't know. <laughs> well, it's yeah, and it's I don't know. It's one of those yeah. deals where it's like it's not it doesn't it doesn't even give you the option to think it's real. I guess. I mean, even with yeah. I mean, this is one of those things where it's like even from the beginning, it's like you know, and it's different. I guess you can kind of compare it and contrast it from like the events of uh, three. Where, yeah, we know that character's going to come back. Yeah, we know they're not dead. But they weren't killed in a way that makes it seem like they're going to die. And there wasn't... It was a bit of a surprise because you didn't know who. So, I don't know. You know who's really dead? Ultimate Doctor Octopus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that brother's dead. That's the death I bought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And even he'll come back. But, you know, it seems very... Legit. So they they kill they kill off the the best villain in the series. That that's I don't know that he was ever the best ultimate villain. But I uh, like Doc Ock. Death was quite believable. Hey, we can introduce an ultimate Lady Octopus now. There you go. Uh, <sighs> so I guess that's it then. Any other no, no other thoughts on this? So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I bought it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's a comic. It's not my thing, so it's like I hate to be too much of a downer because it's like, yes, this comic book that I never buy, I bought and it sucked. You know, it's like uh, I didn't I understand. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know understand. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't feel invested <laughs> in the characters. Yeah, we'll try to read the previous 159 you took it out of its issue. It's worthless, and they have to buy it back from you, otherwise they're <sighs> breaking the law. And you're so I hate to. I hate to be like a downer bitch about it, but I, I mean, I, I mean, at least as a capsulated issue, it didn't grab me. But I can understand if I was invested, it would probably be a little bit cooler. So. Well, kids, that's it. That's the show. Um, that's all the comics we had this week. There's um, more stuff next week, I think. So that'll be fun. McFeely's already said he's going to have um, something different next week. Wacky off the wall stuff. So who knows what? Good, because I, I like the off stream stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. We like, you know, like I said, we always like to when we can cover non, you know, main things. So. Um, anyway, again, um, always join us every, uh, Sunday, 4.30 Eastern, 9.30 GMT time, um, which is, you know, close to bedtime, but whatever. Um, check us out live, tfradio.net slash live. You can also check out our Twitter feed at fanboyvs or at tfradio. As well, all of our Twitter feeds are on the website. Check all that stuff out. Podcasts usually post on Monday. I'm going to try to keep on that now. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that, that's that's the awesome that's stuff. About it. I mean, that's pretty much it. Check out comicnewsi.com for all your latest comic book news. Also, listings for what comic books are going to be coming out. So they're a good source. We post shows over there when I remember to post them there. So, and uh, maybe be looking for some more supplemental stuff. I'm kind of getting interested in getting back into doing sparring editions. So, um, I kind of remember to do that. Yeah, those are <laughs> they're nice to do. So we might, not on a week like this. No, this was not a week for it, and that's kind of been I, the thing. It's been a little bit slower, but I like to. I've talked about everything I bought this week except for Transformers. So the, the actual Transformers, Dark yeah, of the Moon. Stuff. I've, I've got a couple of single issues that'll be older stuff. Like I said, I've still got to read this uh, Spider or Batman Woman. I'm sorry and. I'm behind Ooh, on a few, yeah. so... You not read that yet? Get no, it, no, no, no. It. It's, it's, yeah, like I said, I've been in a pissed mood this week, so I didn't want to read anything that might be good and just be like, oh, this sucks. Screw it. I've been making really, <laughs> really good headway into my trade pile now. All I have left is Captain America and two Mystique volumes, and then Morrison's Batman. Nice. So, I still need to read making, my booster gold. Oh, big, yeah. big, big <laughs> dent in my trade pile. Gotta get the booster. So, anyway... Booster gold and Fear Agents. Those so. are the two back. Awesome. Well, um, again, everybody, uh, Nicole, uh, Triplet, McFeely, thanks for joining me again. So good times there. Glad that we're whole gang's back together. 
I know. Yeah. It's been a few yeah. weeks. It's, it's been like a month <laughs> since we were all together, so. Yeah, I'm true. sorry. So, uh, no, no, you, you know, I mean, you had to go to BotCon and stuff, you know, so. Yeah. You just had to go. I, I have my toys here if you want to see them. Yeah, I got the toys, too. Don't rub that's, it in. That's okay. Aww. McFeely's going to have to I go to, like, any toys. auto Aww. assembly here, and we're not going to get to go to that, so, you know. Yeah. Got, so. Here's here's my little motor master right here. Look at this cute head. Look so at that head. head <laughs> oh, and um, I'll just tease that there may be something cool that some of us are going to be involved in. So I'm just going to say Ooh. there may be something cool. I'm just saying that at least I'll be involved in and maybe others. But that's it. That's all I'll say. Something cool that's not on the show, but something that. So, so JD, he's becoming a member of the Voltron Force. He's going to form no. the head. No, Triplet, Triplet, <laughs> should, Triplet should know what this is. You know what I'm talking about. Coming okay. End, end of next month? No? Huh? Something? I have no, no? idea, honestly. Okay. Okay, then, well, anyway, anyway, something cool <laughs> okay. that, like, ten people will see, but whatever. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so that's it. Again, thanks so much for joining us, and please tune in next week when it'll be Fanboy versus... This has been Fanboy versus... Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Like the podcast? Leave us feedback on iTunes. Copyright 2011, Radio Free Cybertron.